Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Werner Tobin here for the Soybean School. Today I am at the Allura Research Station catching up with Omafra Soybean Specialist Horse Bonner. Horse, how's it going? Excellent, good to see you. Hey Horse, I want to talk about this year and uh, specifically some of the beans you're standing in there right now. Uh, it has been a challenging year. One of the things we've seen is lodging. And uh, hey, yeah. give us a sense of what you're seeing here in front of you and you know what the impact of lodging has been this year. Yeah, so with that really wet August that we had this year, a little bit cooler, we had a lot more top growth, a lot more biomass. In fact, in some of the plots here where they've been measuring biomass, we have about 40%, in some cases 50% more biomass than last year. We had no lodging in, in this area, in this plot uh, last year, but here you can see right on this side, it's not too bad, it's got the power lean. We can live with the power lean. Uh, this is a higher population, right? So we've got 230,000 seeds, which we know is too high, but we're trying to figure out that, that maximum economic return versus the 160, and the 160 is kind of our general recommendation, and you can see still in 15-inch rows standing nicely uh, here. Uh, is this going to cause us any yield loss? Well, it depends on how bad the lodging is. The power lean, as some guys call it, we're okay with that, right? We're okay with that. It's when they really get close to the ground. What about um, disease now? Is it a combination, is that yield impact a combination of what happens when they go down and, and, and a disease impact? Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of things going on, but when they start to get close to the ground and really lean over, you will often see more white mold in there and certainly more other, uh, other leaf diseases and of course even pod and stem blight and all those kind of things which which will reduce yield and 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 interestingly sometimes even the maturity is a little bit delayed right so if they go right down that's a, that's a big problem for us and and you can see from from this picture here you know this is where we applied some nitrogen to really feed these beans to actually we were trying to replace all end fixation from the air and wow Right in this plot, bad news to have it lodged so bad, yeah. Now, horse, we've done a lot of breeding for yield. Mm -hmm. What about lodging? Well, lodging is one of those things that, you know, it's not every year, right? So it's hard for the breeders to always include that as, as a component, but they're doing a pretty good job. If you look at the performance trials, each of the varieties has a rating for lodging. And, of course, we do that to try and help growers understand how to target a specific variety. So if you have a field that has typically tall, lush, beautiful growing conditions for soybeans, you want to make sure you choose a variety that has a good lodging rating, um, even if you have to maybe, may, maybe think about the yield component of that. Maybe it's a little less, but boy, you don't want those beans to lodge, right? Mm. Um, absolutely, that is a big problem for us some years. What about feeding soybeans? You are a big proponent of yeah. feeding for yield. Do you have to be careful with your nutrient package? Well, mostly around nitrogen, right? And maybe phosphorus a little bit, but the, 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 the interesting part is actually potassium, which beans need a lot of, we all know that, it's the opposite. Beans that have a lot of potassium available to them what seems to happen is they have more pods and the pods suck all the photosynthate out of the plant earlier on. They mature a little bit earlier and actually there's less lodging. So potassium, no. The others, yeah, for sure. You, gotta, you, you don't want to push them too hard. And on that note, you know, some of the high contest yield, high yield contest winners, one of their major challenges is lodging. Hey, what about, uh, what about tillage here? I mean, like, mm -hmm. you know, conventional till, planting in, into that versus no-till. Is there a lodging difference? There certainly can be, right? Typically, in no-till, beans are a little bit shorter, and uh, that actually means often there's less lodging uh, in, in no-till fields than in plowed fields, for sure. Final question for you, and that is a takeaway from this year. Obviously, you've seen a lot of lodging. Anything that we can take into to next season from a learning perspective on, on lodging from this year? 
Well, you know, I think we want to get our populations right, you know, especially in those fields that have a lot of growth potential. And then we really want to want to think about variety choice. And if you look at this picture here, there's huge differences between varieties and how some fall over and some don't. Great stuff, Horse. Always uh, great to have you on the Soybean School. It's been fun. Take care.